Hi, I'm Andrea Sanel, tech nerd at Acuvi Piezza Motor and responsible for the business towards smartphone industry. Today we will talk about moving optics in uh, smartphone cameras and the technology behind it. First, let's mention about the trends we see in the smartphone camera business. And uh, of course, everybody wants to make uh, cameras with improved image quality. That's the goal for everyone, of course. And one way of doing this is um, by increasing the size of the image sensor, but also the optics, the lenses, basically. Uh, second thing is to enable different zoom level. And so far, the way this has been done is by adding number of, of uh, cameras. One camera for each zoom level. Third is improved image stabilization. And uh, the fourth I would mention is actually a demand we see from, from the user to have a continuous zoom, uh, not discrete zoom. Uh, there are different cameras uh, available in smartphones. The absolutely most uh, common is the vertical camera, uh, where light comes in in this direction and image se sensor uh, on, close to the screen, all in the same uh, direction. And the same for selfie camera, also vertical camera. To enable zoom on a high level, I would say beyond 2x uh, zoom level, then you need to fold uh, the light so you can have larger distance between the lenses and longer path of the optical path. That is the only way to have a telephoto or a longer zoom on an optical level. And this has been around since uh, around 2019, first found in Huawei phone and also Oppo phones. And the principle is uh, light coming in through a uh, prism and uh, bent 90 degrees. And then you have a number of lenses in the 90 degrees shifted uh, direction. And in the end of this optical path, you have the image sensor. And since you have folded it, you have more space and longer av available optical path. Where do we need moving optics in a smartphone camera? I would say it's in three. Uh, different area. The first and most common, that's out of focus, and that's available in more or less every camera. The second is the optical image stabilization, available in most cameras, especially the main cameras. And third, not yet available, uh, is the continuous zoom, or the zoom basically. So out of focus, the most common application for moving optics uh, found in the vertical cameras, for example. They move the lens, one of the lens group, because it's a number of lens always, uh, move one lens group uh, to have focus on the object you want to, to have focus on. Uh, so different level of movement uh, for different focus level. The stroke is typically less than a millimeter, far less than a millimeter. Uh, actually, and then the force needed is uh, just a few gram force. And, uh, but settling time is very important. It needs to move very fast and settle very fast. The second area is the optical image stabilization. And uh, this um, have been around for a long time in vertical cameras. And how to do it is moving the lens in uh, X, Y direction, pan direction that is, but also tilt. So you can see here that we, we, you can actually move the lens in, in any direction, but also tilt it. If you have a folded camera, uh, you know, with the prism, uh, the most common way to have optical image stabilization, OIS, is by moving the uh, prism instead. The third area where you have moving optics is in optical zoom, or rather this is a demand uh, coming from, from the user. So far, uh, you can only zoom in discrete level. And what you, are, what you basically do is shifting from one lens to the other, or one camera module to the other camera module. But if you want to make it smooth with a smooth zooming, there exists no solution today for this. So the continuous zoom is, uh, I would say, demand. Uh, that are not yet met. In folded camera there is a way of solving this um, and then you need to move both one lens group for uh, adjusting for the outer focus but a second lens group also for adjusting the zoom level. 
and to move them uh, in conjunction is uh, is the critical part to have both focus level and zoom level so what motor types exist to solve these moving optics today the first and absolutely most common and uh, is the voice call motor or vcm motor actuator uh, basically the same name for for uh, two names for the same thing a voice coil motor is is a uh, electromagnetic motor folded out and it exists of three parts it's a coil copper coil it's a magnet and it's a suspension in some way and in vertical camera all these suspension are done with springs so they are holded uh, into a position with the resting position in the middle and the coil uh, in, is acting to, uh, on the magnet to move towards or against the coil. But if you want longer stroke, the spring is not a good solution. Therefore, you often use ball bearings, uh, which is really good. It can be very accurate in, in the uh, linear direction. The drawback with it, though, is when you have it powered on and move to a certain position, you need a lot of energy to keep it there. And secondly, if uh, you turn the electricity off, which you do when you turn the camera off, and uh, the lens group will be able to move in any direction and uh, on the high-end phone with this solution you can actually hear a rattle if you uh, shake the phone and that is the lens moving slightly in the outer focus module the second kind of motor or actuator existing is a shape memory alloy or sma in, in principle it's a metal that have a memory of the position it's uh, being manufactured at and this memory can you can move back to this memory position by hiring uh, the temperature so it can move bet between two certain position and uh, commonly this is done with a thread uh, with, with um, memory this is good for uh, slightly larger lenses uh, with, with intermediate uh, stroke, um, but th th there is a limitation in the trade-off between stroke, force and lifetime that is rather crucial, but in some applications it's, it's uh, actually rather good and upcoming. The third technology used for smartphones and moving optics is piezo motors. If you only look at the area for, for smartphones, I would divide these motors into two areas. The first one is the ultrasonic motor, and the second one is the inertia type, some kind, uh, sometimes called smooth impact drive mechanism, SIDM. So uh, ultrasonic motor, it basically works with a piezo component put in vibration and transferring uh, movement towards a moving object through friction. And uh, uh, this is often done in, in high frequency. It's always done in high frequency. And, uh, uh, close or at the resonance frequency of, of the system. Uh, the second area, the inertia drive, is uh, making use of the inertia of the moving parts. So you're basically moving with a piezo in one direction and get the object to move and then you suddenly retract it uh, while the moving object is not following this retraction. And this is repeated many times. In general, the forces in piezo motors are high. And compared to VCM, they are very high uh, related to the size. Speed is high for ultrasonic motor and the traveling distance is close to unlimited for ultrasonic motors. For the inertia tra uh, drive, uh, the, the traveling distance can be rather high, uh, up to 5 or maybe even to 8 mm long. And the speed is uh, limited but on an OK level. So to summarize all this together, VCM in smartphones is the absolutely most common solution to move optics. It's perfect for autofocus and vertical cameras. Used in optical image stabilization commonly uh, and uh, today also used in folded optics for autofocus. But there is a limitation there and uh, there is a need for improved technology for, for both the autofocus but definitely for the continuous zoom in folded optics. SMA is an upcoming solution for a specific solution and uh, uh, can have a good opportunity in, in optical image stabilization, but also in autofocus. 
for optical zoom, this is not a solution. And last but not least, PSU motors. They are suitable for specific application, like in folded optics, to move lens for out of focus, where you need a longer stroke. Uh, this is uh, the absolutely best solution. And if you want continuous zoom, there exists no solution better than a piezo motor. And I would say especially ultrasonic motor. And the piezo motor we from Acube provide, piezo wave, is uh, designed in a way so the trade-off between the dimension is optimized for this kind of solution. Uh, it provides uh, high force and very fast settling time uh, to any needed uh, number with the precision outstanding. Um, you actually need to position in, in the micrometer level. This is possible with the Piezo Wave solution. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting. Until next time, goodbye.